Hello there. We're here today to talk to some of our clients, um, Charles and Ellen, with their lovely dog, Alf. Alf's been with them over about a year and a half now, and he came from a rescue centre. And Charles and Ellen have put a lot of good time in with them to help him uh, become a really good dog of what he is today. Can you tell us a little bit about how he came about to be, how he came to be with you guys? We had a bull terrier, which we'd had from seven weeks old, which we lost and I wanted to get another bull terrier straight away. I grew up with bull terriers as my background and despite the reputation, I know they're very loving, they're very friendly and they're very good dogs, especially where you've got young children. So when Jasper was put to sleep, I said to the girls, Ellen and our two daughters, I wanted to get another bull terrier. So Ellen came up with the bright idea that we'd get a rescue bull terrier because we'd heard so many stories about the pounds and the rescue homes being full of bull terriers. And we found a rescue society that specializes in bull terriers. So they had a particular bull terrier in, he was 12 months old. They asked us if we wanted to go across and have a look at him. So we said, yep, and met Alf for the first time, who was in kennels. Um, we decided to take him for a walk. We took him for a walk and we had him on a long lead because we wanted to see what he was like. And we're in a field, just the two of us, Ellen, Alf and myself, and Alf turned, ran back towards Ellen, and he sort of nipped her on the leg. Okay. When he nipped her on the leg, he came, I had the lead, he came up to me, and he had a go at me, but I saw it coming, and I just fended him off with my foot. I thought, I'll see what he's like with treats. Yes. So I took a treat out, and he sat, and I gave him the treat. He took it very gently, finished the walk, took him back to the kennels, handed him back, spoke to the guy that runs the rescue society and we said we'd think about it. So I thought, he's a young dog, he's undernourished, I think there's a nice dog in there somewhere. And so I rang the guy and said, we'll have him. So next week we went back across and collected him until so we got home, we didn't know he was there, did he? Walked him around the village to get him used to scents, smells. He was okay, he was a bit unsure. Kept him in a cage at night time in the kitchen so he had somewhere where he could call his own and retreat. On the Saturday, we came out into the garden and we started to play with him to give him some exercise. And then as we turned to come back into the house, my youngest daughter and myself, he just went berserk. He just came in snarling, growling. He came in and he ripped the back out of my jeans and marked my cheek of my bum. I rang the rescue place and I said, look, you didn't tell us this dog had these tendencies. And the rescue place said straight away, just put him down. Right. And I said, put him down. They said, yeah, um, just pay for him to have him euthanized and we will send you the money to have him euthanized. And we had a family chat and we said, can't do that. We've got to give him the benefit of the doubt. And then these sort of occurrences where you just flip and you just turn started to happen more and more. He attacked me from under the table. One day I just came in the kitchen and he came charging out from underneath the kitchen table and he bit me all the way down my leg. Didn't break the skin, but he marked my leg. Okay. And the worst incident was I'd walked him, would come round the corner, there were three crows on the ground and he lunged at the first one, I pulled him back. He lunged at the second one, I pulled him back. He lunged at the third one and again I pulled him back you know, sharp tug on his lead. And he just turned and he latched onto my wrist there and clamped down. I got so annoyed with it and thought, you know, this is not gonna change. I actually rang the vets and said, I want this dog euthanizing. And I put, the vet said, we can't do it straight away. We'll do it, uh, we can do it in the next two hours. So we'll come up at 11 o'clock. Wow. And that was the decision he'd made because of what it, the, well, yeah, because I couldn't, see any, I couldn't see any end to it. It was so unpredictable. One minute you'd be fine, you'd be just like that. And then you'd say something like, come on, we'll go in. And he didn't want to do it. So it would be, lips would be back, fangs would be out. He'd be snarling and growling. And he's running in all the time at you, trying to nip the back of your legs. So I thought, right, like the condemned man, I took him for his last walk around the green. And when I got back, Ellen said, you've done that in anger. I said, yeah, I have. She says, well, you'll regret it. So I thought, yeah, you're probably right. 
So I rang the vets and cancelled it. So he came within two hours of being euthanized. We went up to a well-known pet uh, retailer who the girls knew Alf because we'd taken him there from day one. And we said we we're having these problems with him. He was a bit unpredictable. Our vet had said he may be one of those dogs that has a loose screw in his brain and you're never ever going to change that. One of the girls said, I know somebody who's very good with dogs, he's called Lee, and he's at the School of Dogs, why don't you give him a ring? So we rang you. We rang you and you agreed to see us and of course we had that first session and then we had a, a series of sessions thereafter where we did one-to-one -one training which we found and I found very instructive okay. and you know it was very informative and you confirmed to us or advised us that you didn't think Alf was really aggressive he was being playful even though I had the the bruises and the indents on my wrist and my legs to sort of say otherwise so we decided to persevere with him. When I first met him I thought he was over the top, he didn't know right from wrong, he was the, pl the player driving him was really high and he had no rules, he had, he had no ground, no training that, he didn't know what sit was, he didn't know what ride down was, he didn't know when stop meant or anything like that did you? No, everything was all a game to Alf but that game had then progressed in the way he was using his mouth, he was using his whole body to um, continue the game to play and it was about giving him back the, the, the tr in the training just a little bit of ground rules saying uh, basically obedience that he has to know when to stop, he has to know when to sit, he has to know uh, when time is for play, when time is for, for having time off the leader as well and he was, he was a lovely dog and I could see it straight away in him and he just had all of the wrong input from somebody who'd played the wrong games with him. Yes, I, I'd agree with that. Um, you know, he, he was too familiar with his mouth on my arms and legs and wrists. And as I say, I had never experienced anything like that. So the techniques that we used were that we weren't to do any sharp movements, any fast movements with him. We were there to train him to, to sit and have all four paws on the ground and then learn him to be patient beside you. Yeah. And how did you find that going for you through, through the training? I mean, the training we did was good because it introduced a sense of discipline. Yeah. Because a lot of the exercises we did, uh, the treat and reward, were he was having to do tasks. So how did you find the use of the clicker training when we clicker train him to sit, stay, or stay still? Again, it was very useful because he was learning a discipline and he was learning a command and he had to respond to that command. So you, you found by using positive dog training methods it helped you give you yeah. a kind of system and so you were able to mark and reward with the dog when he did something yes. good. So the training was, it was good because it also gave me confidence which was, my confidence was quite sort of fashed. Having had a bull terrier that did everything when you said, when you wanted, this one didn't until we came to see you and of course through all those one-to-one -one training sessions we did, he learned to respond to commands and he, he knew he was going to get rewarded and we still, we still carry treats. So from when you first got Alf and all the stuff that Alf was doing and that decision you were going to make, how do you feel now by going through all of the dog training methods that we've done and all the training you've done with them, how do you feel it's benefited you? It gave me some more confidence, it gave him discipline. We realised through that discipline that he was quite intelligent and obviously he had to sort of come round to our way of doing things otherwise you know, it was the end of the road as far as Alf was concerned. All he would have had in the time he was with us was an extended holiday. I think every dog should be given a chance and every dog should have the opportunity to have some, some training and once it's had the training then we, we see the results what we're seeing here today. Every dog should be given that opportunity. So let's just like to say a big thank you to Charles and Ellen and Alf. If you like what you see and you'd like some more tips on training, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and send us a comment below as well. Ha 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 ha